Okay, this is exercise 4C, question 19F. And um, the question asked us to draw the displacement versus time graph, which we did. But um, I suppose some people are a bit concerned with why that's maybe concave down, why this is concave up, and why that's concave down. Yeah, it's when, yeah, when A equals zero, you've got an inflection. When A is negative, it's concave down. When A is positive, it's concave up. There's another inflection, concave down. So earlier in the question, you may have been asked, were you asked to work out acceleration or anything like that or no? So this is question 19. You were given um, a graph. Here's the acceleration curve. Can you see that? Look in part B. Acceleration's negative up to pi on 2. From pi on 2 to 3 pi on 2, acceleration has positive values. And from 3 pi on 2 through to 2 pi, acceleration has negative values. So from 0, time 0 to, to time pi on 2, acceleration's negative. So let's go down to the graph. So from time 0 to time pi on 2, it's concave down. Oh. No, there's pi and 2 here. So from time 0 to time pi and 2, it's concave down. Can you see? And then it's concave up from pi on 2 to 3 pi and 2. Why? Because when you look at the acceleration graph, from pi on 2 to 3 pi and 2, acceleration has positive values between 0 and 2. And then from 3 pi and 2 to 2 pi, acceleration, as you can see here, has negative values. So it would be concave down. So the curve from 3 pi on 2 to 2 pi, sorry, is concave down. That's how you know the shape. Now, in the earlier parts of the questions, I believe that at different times we worked out the position of the particle. And that's why we were able to put those points there. So now, the last part of the question that I didn't do in the video and that I didn't um, do on the worksheet, we, we did work out this displacement versus time graph, but you had to work out the total distance travelled and the speed, average speed. So I'm just going to um, bring some paper in to do that. Exercise 4C, question 19F. Total distance travelled. Now, it can be worked out a few ways. We know distance travelled is area under the velocity curve, but you can also just look at where the particle is. Now, where my cursor is now is at two metres to the right of the origin, and then I'm going up to how far? Do you know what this point is? Three plus pi on six. So, girls, this is the distance it travels. It travels from two to three plus pi on six, and then it travels back down to this point here, which is... 5 pi on 6 minus 3, and then it travels up to 2 plus 2 pi. And so they're the distances that I need to work out. So the total distance travelled, I've got to work out three sections from 2 up to 3 plus pi on 6. So it's 3 plus pi on 6 minus 2. That's the first section. Do you get that? Girls, you're travelling from 2 up to here. And then you're travelling back down to this. Now that point is 5 pi on 6, 5 pi on 6 minus root 3. So you're travelling from 2 to 3 plus pi on 6. So if I can do 3 plus pi on 6 minus 2, isn't that 1 plus pi on 6 in that first section? And then in the next section, so I've just done from there to there. Then from that down to here, I'm travelling, we should do final minus initial. I'm travelling 5 pi on 6 minus root 3 minus where I started from, which is 3 plus pi on 6. Of course, I've got to use brackets. Does this... I am recording. Guys, I'm moving from 2 up to there, and then aren't I moving from that position down to here? Guys, this is time and this is position. Look, I'm going to draw it on a thing. This is what I'm doing. I start at 2. Do you get that? Oh, now we can't see that. All right, I'm starting at position 2. Do you agree? At x is 2. Then I go up to, this position is, time is pi on 6, x position is 3 plus pi on 6. So I'm then going from there to the point 3 plus pi on 6. Do you agree? 
Then I turn around. My velocity is negative now. And I'm going from 3 plus pi on 6. And then I'm going back down to this position. Now this, is, this point is 5 pi on 6, 5 pi on 6 minus root 3. That's that point. The first one's the time, the second one's your displacement. So then I go back to from 3 plus pi on 6 and I go back to 5 pi, sorry, 5 pi on 6. Then I'm going from that point, which was up here, down to this point. And the x value is 5 pi on 6 minus root 3, right? Then I go from that point up to this point. This point is 2 pi, 2 plus 2 pi. The 2 pi is the time. The 2 plus 2 pi is the displacement. So then I go from that point that I was just at back up to 2 plus 2 pi. So I go from 5 pi on 6 minus root 3 back up to 2 plus 2 pi. So I have to add that distance to this distance to that distance to get my distance travelled. Okay? So we've worked out the first distance. The second distance is that minus that because it's always minus, mi final, minus initial, which is, what's this? 5 pi on 6 minus root 3 minus 3 plus pi, minus pi on 6. Isn't that 4 pi on 6 minus root 3 minus 3? And then the third, so that's first distance travel. That's second, that's third. I haven't even gone to look at whether we've got x, v there, all right? Then the third distance is you do 2 plus 2 pi minus that. So 2 plus 2 pi minus. Girls, I should just do it all in one. I should just do, oh, it doesn't matter. So it's that minus that, which is 2 plus, what's 2 minus 5 sixths? Isn't it 1 and 1 sixth? 2 pi minus 5 pi and 6 is 7 pi and 6. Then we've got plus root 3. So it's that minus all of that. So now add those three distances together and you will get... Well, I'm just going to look at them all together. 1 minus 3 plus 2, what's that? 1 minus 3 plus 2, and then we've got pi on 6 plus 4 pi on 6 plus... Do you see what I'm doing? I'm adding all the same ones together. I'm adding these three together. So I'm doing the 1 minus 3 plus 2, then I'm doing pi on 6 plus 4 pi on 6 plus 7 pi on 6, and then I'm doing the, the roots, negative root 3 plus root 3. Now they cancel, obviously. So that's negative 2 plus 2, isn't that 0? So it's just 5, 12 pi on 6, it's 2 pi. No, it is the wrong answer. Wait a sec. If you do that minus that, you get 2 pi, but that's not the distance travelled. So it is that distance plus this one, plus that one. The means, when you do that minus that, you get a positive answer. This is correct. But when you do this minus that, this is lower than that, you get a negative answer and that's the problem. We're taking the distance away instead of adding it. So the last one's fine. The last one's fine because 2 plus 2 pi is bigger than that. Sorry, but we've just got to swap these two around, okay? Or just swap the sign of this. Well, I don't want it this way. I need to do 3 plus pi and 6 minus that. Because if I do this minus that, I get a negative. So it's in the absolute value? I think just swap. That should be negative. That should be positive. That should be positive. So if you do the absolute value? No, because how do you know? You could do the absolute value, but if you do do the absolute value, you're not going to be able to give me an exact answer. So you can't. So if you want the distance from there to there, it has to be a positive answer, distance travelled. Just do that one minus this one. So if I'm going from 10 to 7, I don't say I've travelled negative 3. I've travelled 3. You would do, if this was 10 and that was 7, you'd do 10 minus 7 is 3. Do you get it? 
this point's higher than that. That's why I'm, this is actually a negative answer. But if you do it on your calculator and take absolute values, you're not going to be able to give me an exact answer. That's what I'm trying to say. So just swap them around. And can you do that? I'm going to go plus that minus this. Got it? I'm just swapping it. Instead of doing that minus that, I'm doing that minus that one. Got it? So that's a plus 3. That's a plus root 3. And this must be a minus. That's all. So we got negative that. Yep. Yeah. So just swap the signs of all those. Guys, instead of, I want to do that minus that. I don't want to rewrite it. Got it? See what I've done? So just swap all those. So now when I add, I've got 1 plus 3 plus 2. Yeah, I'm just fixing it here. Then I've got pi on 6 minus 4 pi on 6 plus 7 pi on 6. And I've got plus root 3 plus root 3. Okay, so I've changed these all. Where it was plus, it's now minus. Where it was minus, it's now plus. Because instead of doing that minus that, I did that minus that. Got it? Otherwise, I'm going to get a negative distance. So, doing all that, I end up with 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6. So, you should get 6 plus 2 root 3. And then pi on 6, that's 8 pi on 6 minus 4 pi on 6 is 4 pi and 6, which is 2 thirds pi. Wait. Okay, so if we do it that way, where did the particle move? We're getting 6 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 pi and 3. Answer says 4 root 3 plus 2 pi and 3. We're going to look at the velocity graph now, option 2, and see if we've got the velocity curve, do we? We have the equation. I did. That's x. Where's the velocity equation? Probably up the top of the question. There's the velocity equation. Negative 2 sine t plus 1. So we're going to try that now. Velocity is negative 2 sine t plus 1. Actually, that would have been so much easier. Velocity is negative 2 sine t plus 1. Distance travelled is the integral. And why don't we just do this in the first place? I know. It's no good? All right, let's try. Between the values of 2 pi and 0. Doesn't matter. It accounts for all of it. It knows the shape and it can work out the area. Change in direction is when you're counting. But if you do the integral under that and it's all the one curve, See, the only time you can't use that integral if I've got a straight line graph and then a flat one and another straight line. That is a continuous function. That can be integrated. Wait. So let's see what you get when you integrate it. What do you get? Negative 2. Integrate, you change the sign, times negative cos t plus t between 2 pi and 0. So we get 4 no, we don't. We get 2 cos t plus t between 2 pi and 0. We get 2 cos 2 pi plus 2 pi minus 2 cos 0 plus 0. And we get, what's cos of 2 pi? 1, isn't it? 2 plus 2 pi minus, that is 2. They're getting 2 pi. So it's just giving you really the displacement. Girls, this is displacement, not distance travelled. So integrating velocity, the, um, the reason it's worked for the other graphs like this is that they're not coming back down. Okay? So when you're doing a normal graph, you know like those questions we did like this, area under the curve, in this case, distant, um, you would get the same for distance travelled and displacement, but when it comes back down, you're not going to. All right, so we can't as you use that. Can't use it. So if you want distance travelled and the the particles coming back down, you you've got to do areas of sections for distance travelled. All right. Right, we're going to do pi on two through to zero, and then we'll do plus 
absolute value of the 5 pi on 6 to pi on 2. Got it? Guys, from 0... Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't... Oh, all right. Sorry. Is this it? What's this one? But isn't that the curve? That's the velocity curve. There's the velocity curve. So you do it from pi on 6 to 0 and from 5 pi on 6 to pi on 6. Pi on 6. So, right, 5 pi on 6 to pi on 6. And then from 2 pi to 5 pi on 6. All right, we'll do that. Right. We're going from pi and 6 to 0, absolute value of the 5 pi and 6 to the pi and 6, and the 2 pi and 6 to the 5 pi and 6. Okay. Negative 2 sine t plus 1. Wait. We already know what the integral of that, so we get 2 cos... Actually, yeah, 2 cos t plus t between pi and 6 and 0 plus the absolute value of 2 cos t plus t between 5 pi on 6 and pi on 6. Now, guys, see that one? Oh, all right. That's the absolute value of that one plus 2 cos t plus t between 2 pi and 5 pi and 6. Running out of paper. So we're doing that. All right, make it bigger. Right. Oh, goodness me. One sec. Oh, no more paper. I need paper. Wait, I'll find some. This will do. Right, let's work it out. Joint effort, please. Let's see if we can get it to work. Now, whatever this is... This is, we'll see if it works, which is 2 cos pi on 6 minus, no, plus pi on 6 minus 2 cos 0 minus 0, right? Good. Plus 2 cos 5 pi on 6 plus 5 pi on 6 minus 2 cos... And now I don't have enough room, so I'm going to move this over. Minus 2 cos pi on 6. And it's minus pi on 6 again, all right? Minus pi on 6. Because it's minus that in brackets. I don't want to do the brackets. Yes. Plus 2 cos 2 pi plus 2 pi minus 2 cos 5 pi on 6 minus 5 pi on 6. I was really hoping without that. Okay, because it's 2 pi, because it's minus bracket, I don't want to do the brackets. So now let's go. What's 2 cos, what's pi on 6? 30. Cos 30, root 3 on 2. 2 root 3 on 2 plus pi on 6, minus 2, plus, problem here is the 2 cos 5 pi on 6, that's quadrant 2, times negative root 3 on 2, plus 5 pi on 6, minus 2 times root 3 on 2, minus pi on 6, absolute value of that, plus 2 cos of 2 pi is 1, oops, you can't see what I'm doing, plus 2 plus 2 pi minus 2 times negative root 3 on 2 minus 5 pi on 6. Anything cancelling, please? Can't cancel with this. So we've got the 2s cancel. All right, so we've got, oh, root 3 and minus, no, that's plus root 3. 
That's two root three again. So that one and this are two root three because it's root three plus root three, so they're done. The minus two and the plus two, they're gone. Two pi minus five pi on six is one and one sixth pi plus another one sixth. Two and no, two, one and one third pi. It's two minus one sixth plus five sixths. No, it's not the other way. It's one and one third, which is four pi on three. So that's all of that, plus absolute value of all of this. Haven't we got negative root 3 minus root 3? Isn't that minus 2 root 3? Plus 4 pi on 6, which is 2 pi on 3. Now, oh, jeez. Can negative 2 root 3 plus 2 pi on 3, is it positive or negative? It must be negative. And to do the absolute value of that, I think you can just swap the signs around. Yes. So it's the, yeah, but just tell me, is minus, is negative, it's a negative. It should be negative because it's underneath. So that's 2 root 3 plus 4 pi on 3 um, plus you do the negative of those. That would give you, see, because that's negative, the negative of that will be a positive answer. Got it? Because that's negative, when you do the absolute value, you put a negative in front of it, which will be 2 root 3 plus 4 pi on 3 plus 2 root 3 minus 2 pi on 3, which is 4 root 3 plus 2 pi and 3, and that's what they got. So they've done it by integration. I don't know why our one's not working. It's 4 root 3 plus 2 pi on 3, and therefore the average speed is the distance travelled over the time, which is... 4 root 3 plus 2 pi on 3 divided by 2, two pi seconds? How many, no, 2 seconds, isn't it? How long does it take? I'm just looking here. 2 pi is the time. The time's 2 pi. Divided by 2 pi. Now, how are we going to divide that by 2 pi, girls? You can't go dividing that by anything unless it's a common denominator, so that's 12 root 3 plus 2 pi on 3. So make common denominator. Divided by 2 pi means times 1 over 2 pi, which is 12 root 3 plus 2 pi over 6 pi. Cancel. They can all be divided by 2. No, not well. All right, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out the 2 and make it 6 root 3 plus pi over 6 pi. That's why I can. So the 2 cancels with the 6. And I end up with 6 root 3 plus pi on 3. Is that what they got? That's what we're getting. Metres per second or centimetres? I don't know what the units are. Where the error is. When t is pi and 6, this should be root 3 plus pi and 6. That's the problem. So that needs to be changed to root 3, and therefore this here is also root 3. Okay? So I'm going to go back to this sheet and change them. So let's see. So instead of being 3 plus pi and 6, it's root 3 plus pi and 6. And instead of here being 3 plus pi and 6, it's root 3 plus pi and 6. Okay? So therefore, this is pi and 6. It's just as is. And this one's different as well. This is plus 2 root 3. And that's the mistake, I believe. Let's hope I didn't make any other mistakes. Um, I'll just have a quick look. That's why it's not working. There's a little mistake. Because it should work. 
either method should work. And the next section was minus... When, no, that's right. Two. The next one's right. The next one's right. And the last one, I'm just checking. And the last one is is two plus that. Yeah, the last one's right. There's only one mistake. There's one mistake and it works. So it does work. Okay, so sorry about that. That's a root three, that's a root three. And when you fix it, you get, not that, you get root three and a root three and another two root three is four root three. I think, is that right? Yeah, pi on six, yeah. so that's eight pi on six, which is four pi on three, yeah. minus two pi on three is plus two pi on three. And we get minus two plus two is zero. Yeah. That's it, it worked. Okay? That the only mistake was that I put three instead of root three. Well, there isn't. You can't simplify that. So it's that, and this one should have been a root 3 here instead of a 3, and we get negative 4 pi on 6 plus 2 root 3. And the last one was right. So when you add those three, you get 4 root 3 plus 2 pi on 3. Well, the medal for persistence, now on video, acknowledged publicly, goes to... Um, <laughs> Lydia, you've been publicly acknowledged for persistence. Okay, and I know a lot of you are as well, very persistent. But, yes. It's good to know that both methods will work, okay? A bit of confirmation there, that both methods will work. But if you really need to, so the motto of the story here, Yes, you do go up, you go down, you add all these distances. Careful, this one will be negative. You need the absolute value of this one. Or you just do highest minus lowest. And if, sorry, I'll put that back up. And if part of the velocity is negative, you're going to have to do the absolute value of this one for distance travelled. All right? Got it? Because when you do displacement, it doesn't, it'll subtract the areas that are below compared to the others. All right? That was good. The body is moving with acceleration proportional to time elapsed. That is, that acceleration equals kt, where k is a constant of proportionality. Um, we're told that when t is 1, v is negative 6, and when t is 2, v is 3. They want us to integrate the acceleration function, adding the constant c of integration. So therefore, velocity is the integral of kt dt. Therefore, velocity equals kt squared over 2 plus c. Now we know that when t equals 1, v is negative 6. We know that when t is 1, v is negative 6, so we get negative 6 equals k times 1 squared divided by 2 plus c. So therefore, negative 6 is k on 2 plus c. We'll call this equation 1. We also know that when, from the question, when t is 2, v is 3. So therefore, this is our equation, linking velocity and time. That when, that 3 equals k times 2 squared over 2 plus c. Therefore, 3 equals, this is 4k on 2, which is 2k plus c. I'm calling that equation 2. Now, this is part A. Now we need to solve, I think I'll move over here now, solve simultaneously. Okay, so we're solving equation 1 and 2 simultaneously. Right, so solve 1 and 2 simultaneously. So girls, I'd be doing equation 2 minus 1 because then you'll get 3 take away negative 6 and you get 2k minus half k. So I'm going to do equation 2 minus 1, and the c's will cancel. So 3 take away negative 6 is 9, 
and 2k minus half k is 1 and a half k, which is 3k on 2, and c minus c is 0. So therefore we get that k is, isn't it 9 times 2 divided by 3? Because I did 3 take away negative 6, and I did 2k minus k on 2, which is 2k minus half k, and I did c minus c. So therefore k is 6. Now substitute k equals 6 into, I don't mind which one. Let's go into equation 2, and we get 3 equals 2 times 6 plus c. So therefore c is, what, 3 minus 12? It's negative 9. So therefore, we found the values of k and c. Therefore, k is 6 and c is negative 9. That's part 1. It says to integrate again to find the displacement function. So we know now that k is 6 and c is negative 9. So we know that v equals kt squared on 2 plus c. Therefore, v equals 6t squared on 2 minus 9. So v is 3t squared minus 9. So now we can integrate again to find x is the integral of 3t squared minus 9 dt, which is 3t cubed on 3, which is t cubed minus 9t plus, don't use k or c, what are we going to use? You can call it C1. Just don't call it C because it's been... Um, well, you're not supposed to because C is negative 9. If I put C here, I can call it C1. So, but guys, do we know? So we don't know. Do we know anything about the initial position? Girls, really important, please. So we've got our equation for velocity. We weren't told anything about when time is zero, what the position of the particle was, so we can't work out C1. So just leave it. Part C, it says when does the body return to the original position? So we want to find T when X is zero. So find T when X is zero. But we've got a bit of a problem because we don't know what C1 is. Actually, no, it's not when x is 0, it's the original position. Now, watch what I'm going to do. You watching? Let's say it starts here. I don't know, it's back at the original position. Do you agree? This is x. It doesn't, I don't mind what the curve does. I'm not saying the curve looks like that because it doesn't. It's a t cubed curve actually. But... It's a t cubed curve, but you don't have to know that. But the, it might start up here, it might start down there. We don't know. But, for example, this might be when it returns. It returns to the original position when the x value is the same. Do you agree? All right. So, when, so this is what we're going to do. Find t when particle returns to initial position. Now, you've got the equation for x, so when t is 0, what does x equal? No, it doesn't. 0 minus 0 plus c1, therefore x is c1. So you want to find t when the particle returns to c1. That's its original position. So sub x equals c1 into that equation and solve. One twenty. Where do you get? Okay, we don't know where the particle is initially, but when t is zero, it's at c one, whatever c one is. So if you want to find out when the particle returns back to c one, you substitute x is c one in here, and the c ones just cancel. And you're just really substituting t cubed minus 9t equals 0. So what can you take out as a common factor? t, t squared minus 9 is 0. Coming across here. 
Therefore, t, t minus 3, t plus 3 is 0. Therefore, t is 0, 3, or negative 3. Can you have negative 3 for time? But t has to be greater than 0. Therefore, the answer is t equals 3. That's when the particle returns to where it originally was, when time is 3. Now, um, all right, just moving that there. That's the end of that question. And I won't um, do it, but we'll just talk through it. So the stone is thrown downwards from the top of a 120 metre high building with the initial speed is 25 metres per second. So you know, so you've got a few things. So if you draw that this is the building and it's 120 high and that's the ground, you know a few things. You know that when time is zero, X is 120 metres positive. You know that they said to take the ground as the origin, okay, which we have. You also know that when time is zero, that the velocity is 25 metres per second. But girls, particles being thrown down, is that positive or negative? Velocity. Negative. Good. And... Why is that important? Sorry? Why is it important to know this? Because it's negative, it's going down. And when at and we also know that acceleration is 10 metres per second per second, um, but it's downwards. Now, girls, from now on, from now on, let's not use A for acceleration. Can we use X double dot? Because in three units, when we do the amplitude, people were getting confused. All right. So I think you were all okay find the acceleration velocity and height because you could do all those substitutions all right did people have the um did we what did we start with you must have started with acceleration and then started integrating yeah. so acceleration is that what did you end up for v, v negative 10 t plus what minus yeah and for x what did you you got negative 5 t squared minus 25 t plus or minus plus 120. that's right so when you did question A, you would have got all those, okay? Because you would have integrated it, add the constant, integrate, add the constant, work them out. So most people, I think, didn't have problems with A. Um, you had to put, to solve the next part, putting zero there. What did you get? I used the quadratic. Yep, using the quadratic formula. T equals three. All right, you would have got, people did that and they ended up with T equals three seconds. Now... That's the time when the ball hits the ground at time equals three. Impact is when something hits something else. And so therefore impact occurs when the impact is occurs when the ball hits the ground. Oh, so, we find v. so in other words, if you want impact speed, it's just find V when T equals three. Just find V when T equals three. Does it matter if it's negative? It will be a negative. It just means that it's travelling downwards. Speed is not negative, but so you have to give the positive answer. So you're just substituting t equals 3 into the equation for velocity. So you'll get v is negative 10 times 3 minus 25. You get negative 55. So therefore, impact speed is 55 metres per second. Why is it negative? Because it's downwards, acting downwards. Okay, are we all good for average speed? Yeah. So it's just distance travelled yeah, over time. So for D, it's just distance travelled over time. Can you do 10 120 over 3, isn't it? Yeah. 40. Okay, just when you read a question, um, you really need to be writing down the information. You've got the acceleration equation. You should be writing when t is 0, v is negative 24, and when t is 0, v, um, x is positive 20. Okay? And once you've written all that, it's really important to write all that out so that you're very clear about the information that you've been given in the question. Then you should find um, the other bits okay. And for part b, when does the particle return to the initial position? When does x equal 20? 
So you'd substitute x is 20 into your x time equation, get the time and substitute it back into the speed equation or the velocity equation.